welcome. Okay, um, so this is my senior project, um, which in the end turned out to be something called Volufind, which is a website that I created. Um, <clears throat> so when designing the senior project, I started out not really knowing that I wanted to do a website per se, but I just wanted to create something that would connect our community, especially here on Martha's Vineyard, and um, I guess show students on Martha's Vineyard all the opportunities that surround them when it comes to volunteer work. Because I know from partial experience that I have had to go out and look for what I wanted to volunteer. I had to go out and look at all these different places asking them if they needed people, and I didn't really know all the places that were out there. Um, so I started this. Um, so when I started, I eventually came to the conclusion that I did want to make a website of some sort because I felt that it was the best way to display the information of the nonprofits on Martha's Vineyard um, in a way that's dynamic so it can change and people can update it, the nonprofits can update their information, students can filter through it. Um, so I started building it, which is this is some of the code there. Um, and at first, I started coding it completely from hand. There were no other tools or anything. I just kind of sat there, and every single thing that the website did was a letter that I typed. Um, and I did that for probably a month or two. Um, but then I ran into the problem that there was no way I was going to be able to finish an entire website with everything that I wanted, like, you know, blocking certain people out of certain things and having all these, like, images and animations by myself. And I actually realized that it was kind of stupid to do this, to be honest, um, because there are so many things out there that people have already created that I can just adapt and change and add to my own. So there was no point for me to kind of sit down and work on all these little things that people have already done for me. Um, so it was a bad idea. Um, so then I started using WordPress, which is kind of an online website builder. You still have to do a lot of stuff by yourself, there's still a lot of coding, but um, it kind of helps you lay out the foundation. And there's a lot of plugins that people have already built so that you can add to it. So there was one where I needed a way for people to filter through my nonprofits that I added. So there was a plugin that allowed me to kind of set that up in a table and have filtering options. So it's a lot easier than me having to build this entire, like spending a week to do this one thing that I can just download and report. And I'm still creating something new because I'm taking all these different pieces that people had not previously put together and put them together. And yeah, this is just like a lot of the code stuff. Um, so yeah, I had to change a lot of like plugins and stuff though because they didn't match exactly what I wanted. So that's kind of what this is. Um, so my sort of like design process is like quick iterations. Like you don't, I don't want to sit down and try to make my website perfect in one go because if you do that, you are going to run into problems and it's going to be a lot harder to change them if you've just you know worked on it for a month and now you're taking a look at it and realizing all these problems that it's had. So I feel that it's better to, you know, maybe change even one line of code. Okay, how does this make the website change? Okay, change it again and again. And just quickly repeat that so that you only are dealing with small problems at a time. Um, so this is sort of the first-ish uh, view of the website. Um, but what happened is I did like a speed test on it, on viewing the website, especially like in the school, because I realized it was slow. And I found that images on your page, which I learned, well, I mean, you kind of know, but like slow a lot of things down. If it has to load a huge image every time you view the website, it's going to be a lot slower. So then I started uh, more of like a plain, simple layout that I felt was actually better because it gets the point across a lot faster. Instead of people dealing with this like big image and everything that's going on, it's just, like, what do you care about? What are you interested in? And getting people right to the main part of the site. Um, and this is where it is currently. Um, so I can I can show you. Really, I probably have to over here. Just have a lot of school computer. Yes. Yes. Sure can. I might actually be able to do it up here. Just um, where, where? Okay, so I can do some stuff up here, I guess. Um, so this is what you see when you first start. 
Um, and if you can pause that, I mean, you click this button and it'll bring you to the registration page. I'm not going to do that now. But um, one of the things is like searching the nonprofits on the island. The school internet is great. Here we go. Okay. So these are, if you are not logged into the website, it is free. You will see sort of a, it's still loading, it's cool. Um, you will see sort of a sample list of websites there. And what I also thought of doing just for now, I'm not really 100% sure what I'm doing with it, is having a way to promote certain nonprofits um, so that if certain nonprofits, because in the future, I want to turn this into a business of sorts. I want to help people, but I do need like, some money to continue and expand it to like the entire United States so that people can find volunteer opportunities not to come right to the vineyard. Um, so this was just a little way I thought of that would be possible for me to make some money. If, pe if there are certain nonprofits that wanted to kind of promote themselves and get themselves out there right away, they could pay a little bit and then people would see them right away without having to scroll through it. So this is kind of like a sample list. Um, so I log in as a student. This is kind of a little page that pops up here. Um, so now you can search through the whole list. So if I was a student coming on, I could come here. And these are just example uh, nonprofits. I don't have anything in there yet. These are just random things. I don't even know what they are. Um, so I could go in and say, I want to work in, let's say, education and research. Um, and let's see what else. I want it to be here, whatever that's in um, And then I can apply the filters. And if there are any positions that match that, which is this one, now I know that if I want to work there and I want it to definitely be in education and research, this is my only option. Um, so then I could click on this and you can get a more detailed um, kind of view of it, like is the work paid, the type of work, the goal of the company, and this is all just like random things, so it probably makes absolutely no sense. Um, but this is just kind of more information. And then on the uh, nonprofits side, which is this, They have a profile, which is what you saw on the student's account that the students see, um, that they can change. For instance, they can change their profile picture, which is here, their background picture. Um, they can even go to activity. And while they can edit all their information, they can also add like a post. So that when a student goes and views their page, they can see any updates that that company has. If they say, oh, today we're doing a special thing where we're going and helping um, people at Windermere or whatever, so they can keep their uh, viewers updated all the time, which is, again, like one of the main reasons I want to do a website, because it allows for like quick changes and it's dynamic, it's not just like a static thing. Because when I, um, when I did look some more online to see kind of what was out there, especially on Martha's Vineyard, I found nothing like this at all. The only thing I found were just like static lists of just like these big bold things like ASMV and it's just lists with like tons of text, which no, I feel like I hit something, which no student will read. No one's gonna just sort down this huge list that they can't sort through and they just have to kind of read this huge block of text and no one wants to do that. So that's again why I decided to do like a website that would kind of filter that down. Um, so again, it comes to like why, you know, if this project um, you may find it interesting or whatever, but even for me, I needed to know why I was doing it because it's it's fun. It was fun for me to build and like work with this stuff, but in the end, if it doesn't have a real purpose, then there was no real purpose of doing it except my own learning, which I don't really think is a good thing to do because I feel like you should learn from what you do, but also be able to take that and like give that to other people in some way by either teaching them what you learned or giving them something that's useful to them. Um, so I feel that my website is useful because as of now, it's just for Martha's Vineyard. Um, but even on Martha's Vineyard, there are no things like this that are dynamic and changing that uh, nonprofits can access on their own. I don't have to go in and add it. They can just log in and add their own information, do whatever they want with it. Um, and 
it'll help, I believe, connect a lot of our students. And I know right now it's not a graduation requirement to volunteer, um, but in the future it may be. And even if it's not, it's very important to volunteer in your community. It's good for colleges, it's good for you, um, and it's good for your community to help uh, people out, especially on Martha's Vineyard since we have such a small community with um, shops and businesses and non people that need like help at nonprofits that are run by just small local people. Um, so it's very important. And also my project can be um, added on to later by maybe one of you um, who as a senior project wants to continue the work I've done. Uh, maybe go out more and reach out to more nonprofits and get them actually on it. You know, go out and advertise this. Um, collect statistics on it. So once you have that, see how many people are viewing it, when are people viewing it, and see maybe what can I change, what can I do. So it's an adaptable project that can be picked up by almost anyone, and I'm willing to kind of let people use it. Um, so I just think it has a, it also a great impact for a community to help um, people get used to like volunteering and everything. And uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, so how did I come up with the name? Um, so I had a bunch of other names that I had just randomly sat there and thought of. I was just sitting there and I was trying to think of like something somewhat simple. I want people to like remember it. And I don't even know if this is going to stay forever. I mean, this is just kind of now. Um, something that people can remember and that kind of tells them what's going on with the simple. I don't want this like huge long thing. Um, so I had other iterations. I don't really remember all of them, to be honest, because they only stuck for about five minutes before I thought of a new one. Um, I, I don't know. I, th I was just sitting there one day. I think I was talking to Mr. McGrath, and it just kind of came to me. I was thinking, like, volunteer opportunities, and what are people doing? They're finding them. So I just kind of stuck that again. It didn't sound too bad, so I left it. Yes? Did you get to a point where you actually spoke to some nonprofits to see if there was interest in this? Yes. Um, I don't have like anything on me, but after I got this done, which was actually pretty recently, and I'm still not done, I actually just changed some stuff right before this. Um, but I did get out to reach, I did reach out to a couple nonprofits, and um, while I have, haven't have asked any to actually join yet, because I have still been working out some little bugs, and I don't want like inviting all these people to join my site, and then there's a huge problem, and like, oh, this is cool, we're never coming out here again. Um, I have talked to some and asked them, like, are, would you be interested in something like this? And every single one of them was very enthused and said that once it was done, they were, if I came back to them, they would love to um, like start posting their information on here because they felt too that they have, you know, all these opportunities. Um, they say, you know, we we have all these needs for people, but we don't get people because students just they don't know all of the things that are around them. So, yes. Kayla. Um, when do you think it'll be like up and running? Like, do you have a time that you can... uh, Probably now, like after I just did a couple of things this morning to get it ready yeah. for this. Um, I think it is... Well, I mean like with like non-profits, like... Oh, oh like them like, on it? To, like, um, search one and then like contact Well, them. I think as of like now, it's ready for them to start joining. Uh -huh. And so, I guess, Basically, my website is to help them advertise, but I first have to advertise it myself yeah. to get them to join. So, as quickly as I can do that, I'm going to try to put like an ad out in the MV Times to tell nonprofits to start joining. Try to get it out amongst uh, students because if you know anyone, maybe uh, parents, family members, parents, members, uh, friends that um, are involved in any nonprofits, then, then maybe they can get the word out too. So, with your help, hopefully. Yes. So right now your website's free to join. Yes, it'll always be my hope. Mm -hmm. If I'm answering your question, I kind of. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my hope is that it will always remain free. I never know, like if I decide to really expand it, and there's things that happen that you eventually do need to. I mean, mm -hmm. the, because I'm you could right like charge like ten dollars just for them to join. Like, yeah, my, like when they place an ad and like mm -hmm. pay for their advertising, they yeah. pay for that. So my goal is to at least keep the joining free because I don't really want to ward off people because it's like 
it's non-profits, not really these businesses that have a ton of money, which is again, why I felt it was necessary to keep it free, because a problem is advertising is so important. I mean, like you see advertisements for Coca-Cola every single day. We all know what it is, but you still see advertisements for it. Um, nonprofits don't really have that same amount of money to spend on advertising, which is one of the problems and why I think it's important. Um, so that they can also compete. Um, what was your question again? Oh, like uh, if you would consider charging oh, yeah, yeah. a so, fee to join, like, you know, keep like joining like free, but maybe you know if you want to promote your nonprofit to that like box that pops up so that people see it right away, no matter what, that could cost some money. Um, putting like ads on the side that could cost money. Mm -hmm. Maybe like more advanced like options for nonprofits. Like maybe you can only add a picture or you can only post updates um, like frequently if you pay or something. Yeah. Um, and maybe for students, I, I know there's some sites out there where we don't pay, but the school pays, and then all the students kind of get a license to use it. Yeah. So that could be a possibility where a school would pay, and then all the students in that school with like the connected email could go in for free and yeah. use it. Yes. So are you envisioning starting this off um, just for schools and students to be the volunteers, or potentially opening it up to the community to see if there are adult volunteers or anything? Um, opening up to the community. Uh, right now, to Specifically for my senior project, I wanted to be like as focused as possible just because there was so much I had to do. Um, and again, I didn't even finish because I haven't got any actual nonprofits on there. Um, so yes, for now it's just for students, but starting like, starting now, I'm going to try to open up to basically any volunteers that want to help any nonprofit, but still keep it local to Martha's Vineyard. I mean, if someone off island finds out about it and adds themselves, I'm not going to like take them off. But I'm not going to like go off island and like promote it. I'm just going to try to keep it here for now. And then if I realize that it's working, kind of test out any, like basically have them testing out the website for me without knowing it. Um, and if all goes smoothly and there's no like bugs or anything, then I'd probably like start to roll it out to more than just Martha's been here. Yes? A couple of questions when we were, you were showing me some of this earlier. Um, one of the questions was about like who's doing the listing, and it sounds like you're focusing more on nonprofits, not just anyone who needs Correct. volunteers for maybe an event. Um, mm -hmm. are, would it expand out to that, or are yeah. you gonna, did you make yeah. a decision? And then, mm -hmm. yep. and then, then my other follow-up to that was also with the listings. Um, I know it was, I thought it was originally only volunteer work, but then maybe it's going to be internship work as well, and I just want to see where, how, what direction you decided to go with all that. Yeah, so I think what I was going to do is kind of have like multiple tabs, you know, sort of, mm -hmm. so you can, I'm going to kind of change the name a bit, so like search nonprofits would just be to like search just all the nonprofits, you can search them. Um, but then I, yes, I also wanted to expand it so that you could do like internships, mentorships, and like small, like maybe one day community events. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I need help catering for my thing. Or um, I'm trying to get some people together to do a uh, beach cleanup. You know, those kind of things would be in a separate area. So that's kind of like the current, like, I don't really know what I call it yet. Kind of almost like current events, you know, what's going on right now that I can kind of help. Like, I don't want to sit there, I'm a student, I don't want to go out and, you know, start interning or doing this volunteer work every single day, but, you know, I do want to maybe help out just once, just maybe tomorrow, so you can go on and see, like, uh, upcoming, like, small events, so that kind of stuff, too. So, yeah, I do want to expand it out, definitely. And now that I kind of have, like, the base of it done, it wouldn't really be that hard to, at least, like, programmatically and, like, put that in my website. It's just, again, like getting that out to people, like, okay, I have this website that does this, but you can also do this, 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 and this. So I was thinking it would be easier to get them to just join how I have it, and then once it's there, I can like message them all on my site or go out and talk to them again and say, hey, we're adding this new feature that allows you to post just like one-time things, or if you have internships, so I, yes. Yeah. So how do you think you'll make money off it? Um, well, Kind of how I said before, um, I think that in a lot of, first of all, advertising, websites are a great place to advertise, especially on Marcus Vineyard. Um, anyone can advertise on it, it doesn't just have to be the nonprofit, so that's always good. Um, but also, I feel that in a lot of communities, not just our own, um, there are lots of volunteer opportunities 
um, all around the world, and especially in the United States. Um, and a lot, I feel like a lot, not many communities have things like this where you can search this. It's not just a problem on Martha's Vineyard. There's just, there's not a lot of, I guess, incentive to have someone spend a lot of time on building something like this for a community. So I feel like if I expanded it out, so if, you know, everyone in the United States cannot use this. Anyone anywhere can use this. Um, then that idea of having like schools pay for it and kind of companies like that would be a lot better because a lot of schools it is requirement to do volunteer before you graduate. So if a school in this community wants to bring this to their kids, I can say you know if you log in for free, you can view like ten or so places, but you can't really do much with it. If you want to do more, then your if your school pays for it, they can kind of give out licenses to everyone in the school because it'll be connected to their email. And now the school is paying for all the students to use it, which is kind of not having each individual person pay to use it, but kind of the bigger groups. Because while I am, again, focused on anyone can volunteer at any age, kind of the bigger, I think, market is probably students. And I think that kind of the reason I built this is to get students more engaged in their communities. So I think having, again, like schools pay for it and kind of licensing it out to everyone in their school would be a good option. Yes. Have you thought about the idea of getting Chamber of Commerces to, because besides students, there's a lot of retirees mm -hmm. who um, enrich their life through volunteer yeah. opportunities. And Chamber of, and Chamber of Commerces deal with a lot of people who move into a community as well. Mm -hmm. And they get that information out. They might be a venue that would actually pay for a website like this or pay for uh, access to it. Yeah, I, I haven't looked into that, but that's a good idea. Yes? Um, I work with a nonprofit that we were just meeting and talking about how, how do we get people to volunteer. And then somebody said, well, what if someone sent from like the uh, county correctional office to, to do the community service? Um, you know, you have to, you know, in order to rehabilitate, you have to come and mm -hmm. do volunteer work. So we were talking about like how we don't want anybody who volunteers to come. Um, so I was just thinking about, is there, have you thought about a way where the nonprofits could sort of vet the people that are interested in volunteering? Would that be possibly yeah. part of the platform too? Yeah, so at one point, and this is still something I'm working on, but it's a little bit more complicated, um, I wanted to have, uh, because a lot of you volunteer works, you kind of have an application of sorts just to kind of see who you are, and you know when can you help or whatever if it's like an ongoing thing. Um, so I wanted to have built into the website a way to like apply to a nonprofit. It's like you could apply, the nonprofit could upload their own custom application, whatever they want to know. Uh, it could just be your name, it could be whatever. Um, so kind of have that on the website. So you go to a nonprofit, click apply, fill out their little application, send it in, and the nonprofits can message you back because messaging is already built in too. They can message you back and say, hey sounds great, can you come now, or whenever. Um, so I think that would probably be the best way to kind of filter it down. Cool. And then it's, it makes it easier because if you have this platform, but say if it doesn't have messaging and everything, then it gets complicated because you're using this platform to find things, but hey, now I have to like manually call them and like email them. But keeping everything in the platform makes it a lot easier because they don't have to worry about how am I gonna email them, when am I gonna call them, it's just, Send out a message, mm. you're good. Cool. And kind of going off that too, there was a, I spoke to someone, someone recently, um, he is a CEO of some company in Hawaii, it, and um, he does a lot of stuff like design thinking, and kind of like this engineering stuff. And he said that he works for, um, he's not the CEO of this company, but he works for like a multi-million dollar company that is based on having volunteers, they're nonprofit, and they need like thousands and thousands of volunteers because they're all over America, um, and they're headquartered in Hawaii, and when I talked to him, he said that when I was done, send it to him because he looked at it really quick and he was interested in maybe like using it for them, like selling it to them, and he would like help me with that to kind of get um, them involved, which I thought it would be a great opportunity because this like huge company using something you've made can't really hurt. Yeah. Well, it can, but hopefully it's uh, positive. Yeah, exactly. Yes? Are there any websites on the internet that do like the same thing? Uh, so yes, there are a couple. 
um, that do kind of like volunteer searching, um, but they're not really specialized for, for like a community. It's kind of like this broader thing, and I personally, like, I'm, they're great websites, but I find them a little, I found them a little bit like clunky and overused. Like, if you go on them, you can probably, I can probably bring one up here and we can, like, I don't want to waste time, but um, they're kind of like clunky and there's just so much going on. They're not really focused on volunteer work in nonprofits. It's like a portion of their site is dedicated to, hey, you can volunteer. But then all their other stuff is like like getting jobs and like yeah. like volunteer work is like a part of their site. But there aren't many that are just dedicated to volunteering. And especially with students. Uh, and like it's the Yes, we really are. Uh, I know you hinted on what the why is, but for me, like personally for you, how much do you volunteer and like would you ever put that in your website saying like why, like on your website, like your mission, your mission or like I created this because yes. through my experience, whatever. So personally, how much do you, uh, do, how much have you volunteered and like, what experience, why did that push you and would you ever include that in your Yes. Um, so to answer part of that first, I do have an about page that has some information on it, um, which I can maybe put on. I actually don't really know how much I put on there. I kind of forget because I did that a lot earlier just to like, kind of get something there. Um, but to be honest, I, I have volunteered for things like the Tabernacle. I have volunteered for, um, let's see, I can't even really think of that many. But I have volunteered for, for some things. But like, even though I volunteered for those things, I only found them because there was like a friend who said, oh, can you help me? Like they were older and they said, can you help me with this? And you know, it's volunteer hours if needed. Um, so while I volunteered for things, I found it difficult to find them. I only knew about them because someone told me about it um, firsthand. And I, I want to volunteer. I, I want to volunteer, but it's, when you volunteer, you normally don't make money. So it can be, Kind of, it can be, it's not really, I don't want to spend a lot of time going online and looking for all these volunteer opportunities, spending like hours of my day searching for these and reading these huge text blocks to find, oh, I can't even volunteer at this place now, or, oh, I found this place, but I've just spent so much time and I'm only going to be working there for a little bit. So, um, what was it, like, why? So, like, my, yes, like, how did that lead so, me like, to, does yeah. your experience volunteering Mm -hmm. Like that you got out of it. Yeah. And like, was that part of the inspiration behind not just that not finding it difficult, but like after you volunteered, is that another reason why you were inspired? To do yeah. It? Yeah. So I, yeah. So I was inspired because I couldn't find anything, so I wanted to get it out here. But also by volunteering, I found it very like I, I feel like I can keep, but like empowering to be honest. Like there's not many people that I know that are my age that did a lot of volunteer work when I was doing it, and it kind of helped me feel better because I just kind of thought back and I was like, wow, I'm helping, I didn't get paid, but that was actually really fun and interesting, and I just helped these people um, like set up an entire show for the tabernacle, like, it was fun for me. Um, so I think getting more people access to that is very beneficial. I mean, it's good for you, it's good for the community, um, so yeah, that was another inspiration. Any other question? Yes, Mr. Connors. Um, can you offer suggestions to juniors and sophomores and freshmen about the same project and what worked and what you might consider? And like for if they're if they're thinking about it. Like why why do why, it? Why should they do it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I actually said a little bit earlier than Mr. Graf, but senior projects. Um, I mean, you get, like, I think it's at least three periods, right? At least three periods out of your day have to be devoted. One, yeah. So, yeah, a certain like, number of periods have to be uh, set out um, for you to work on your senior project. Um, and during that time, you don't have to be in school, um, which some people, some of their senior projects involve not being in school. Like, I know Tucker, um, he built Surf, was it he, he kind of worked with surfboards and stuff, so he would go out and kind of test these different designs of surfboards and go out on the water and actually surf them. So it's very hands-on if you want it to be. Um, and you can 
do whatever you want. Like it's, it's a chance for you in high school to do whatever you want. Um, if you're interested in, I mean, it can be anything. Some someone did a um, like yoga. They were interested in yoga and how it like affects your body. So they did a senior project on, you know, they go out and try different uh, yoga classes, yoga styles, and everything. Um, and they learned a lot from it. You learn a lot from what you're doing. I learned how to make a website like this. I didn't know how to do this before. Um, I've learned how, you know, I've, while there are no sites on here now, I have reached out to people, and it's actually difficult to, like, how do you word an email to someone asking them to join something without being, like, too, like, just direct about it and, or being too loose? Like, you want to tell them what you're doing, but you don't want to, like, make them, like, join. Um, so you learn a lot, and it's just a chance for you to kind of like I said, do whatever you want. Um, it can be difficult at times because you have so much time. You have to kind of stick to a schedule. Um, so I find it very important if you ever do to like set a schedule for yourself. You have to do a journal every day to week um, anyway. So that's kind of helpful. But yeah, I I would definitely do a senior project if you have space in your schedule your senior year because you learn a lot from it. You can do whatever you want. It's kind of a way to get away from like the pure academics of school and start doing something that you want to do in the future. A lot of people in the past have created businesses out of what they do for their senior project. Um, they have uh, just continued it on after school. Like this, I'm going to continue when I'm out of school and going to college, for sure. I think, was it Burton? It's the, oh, Burton Snowboards? Yeah, Burton Snowboards, I think, yeah. was started by someone who did a senior project. Johnny Cupcake? Yeah, Johnny Cupcake. Like, Burton Snowboards is a huge company, and he started just like me, a senior project, just doing this, and now it's a huge company. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely do it. And if anyone wants to take over this in any fashion, uh, <laughs> I want to leave it to people to do whatever they want with. Yeah. If someone wants to do it, to either um, kind of just expand on it, get more people, and you can do. You don't have to do anything to do with the website. You can just see how people interact with the website. What's it like? Does it actually work? Kind of do something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Are you doing your? Is like the senior project just the second semester, or is it both semesters? It's second, yeah. But it's for like the whole second semester. Yeah. Well, look, some people are already thinking about next year, and some people I know some students are already working on stuff for next year. So yeah. it's never. I mean, if you have time to work on something that yeah. would lead into it. Um, there's no reason not to, as long as you have time to do it. It's like, never too early to start working on it. Last year we had students who signed up for an independent study that then, um, then they carried over to an ind another independent study the first semester, which morphed into their senior project. But that was their plan. And the way that they started it was they had this idea, they knew it was going to be a big idea. This is uh, Miles and, and Darby. Um, they wanted to do it, but they knew it was going to take a lot of time. So they started planning that the second semester of their junior year and working on independent studies to help them get to the point where they put on a full production. Um, we have one student next year who's already going to um, learn how to uh, create a new course for lifeguarding at the high school. He wants to do that for a senior project. He's going to start in the fall. And then there's another student that wants to, um, he's already created a company. Um, uh, eco-friendly um, products <laughs> website. So you can actually a, a selling website for um, blue products that are friendly for the, for the environment. You might know who that is, yeah. who's doing that. So he's, he's a junior that's working on his senior project already. So some people are already doing it, but I mean, really you're supposed to start officially in January or so, yeah. you could start any time. Yeah, you're supposed to not like really do a lot of your work until you're actually doing it during the senior project because kind of the point is to give you time to do your project. Um, but like for mine, I kind of came up with this idea before. Like it was during the first semester and actually during the first semester was when I started a little bit with that like um, older version of the website when I like built it completely from scratch um, and kind of the actual time my senior product started was halfway through that, leading up to like the newer version. Yeah. So you can always do a little bit before if you like, have an idea and then you realize you're going to need a lot more time to finish it and you want to do it during your high school career and make some product at the perfect time. I have a question about even the block of time. So if it's a, say it's a two block or a three block senior project, are the students allowed to, is it to come and go as an open campus somewhat, or do they sign in? What are sort of the logistics There's, of it? So the logistics of the mm -hmm. senior pro, uh, yeah. campus, and this may 
change this summer? Yeah. But the logistics are is that you you've got to get a, you have to have a set plan and you have to have your parents sign off on it. Um, and it is you have a mentor, so who will you have an in in school mentor and out of school mentor that you have set meetings with. Um, as well as checking in with the three, um, Mr. McGrath, myself, and Mr. Connors. Um, so there are guidelines along the way. So even though it seems like, oh, you've got all this free time, it is very scheduled that you're checking in with an adult regularly on the progress of your, of your senior project. And then the logistics of leaving school, there are a lot of students this year who stayed in school but stayed in places where they they were working. So uh, Mills, with his robot, was doing a lot of work in the library. Um, he, he would spend all day in the library because that's where he functioned best and he could get access to people who he needed to ask questions of. I, think I worked in the library too. In the innovation lab, I stayed here for all my periods. I, every so often I would go out and if I needed to get something at home or whatever, but for the most part I found it really useful to work in school too because you have so many people around you that know what they're doing and access to computers and, there are a lot of uh, art students that will work in the studio and then uh, go over to Featherstone. So it it really is, we try to have the, the school incorporated in it, mm -hmm. but also outdoor, or outdoor, outside the areas. One more question? No more questions? Anybody? Last chance? <laughs>